Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Potential Unleashed. We're back for another video. We will be reacting to Classroom Elite Season 2, Episode 10, and afterwards we'll be doing a breakdown. With that away, let's get into it. You know, I just gotta say this. As a light novel reader, sometimes it's hard, like, rewatching stuff from, like, Season 1 and Season 2, knowing, like, character progression and, like different things that have changed throughout the story um and like just in general like if you guys are fellow like novel readers i'm on year two volume six i think um so like i think they've went up to all the way to volume seven so i have one more after that um i'm like halfway through volume six so you guys probably know what i'm talking about if you know you know right it's just very weird watching it now after like reading everything that's happen right um so if you guys aren't like novel readers you guys are in for a very interesting ride i will say that ichino say sagayanaki two of my favorite girls in the series hmm. and what is the one thing that like she stinks at she stinks at being able to Detach her emotions from rational decisions, right? Ishinose never has and never will be able to make a logical decision. She will always try to save everybody. And hence why she is the weakest of the four leaders. Well, yeah, out of Ruin, Sayunaki, and Rikta, Ishinose is the worst one. Not saying that she can't lead. She just can't distinguish making a rational decision from her emotions. In the end, that's why um, her class steady... Um, stays the same and every other class is doing better there's no truly good person that exists it's impossible he don't want you he don't want you oh he somebody's telling him Uh oh, it's starting to get stuck. Damn, is that, look at Ishizaki. By the way, if you guys don't know who Ishizaki is, you guys probably do. He is one of the people, that guy was one of the people who fought with Sudo all the way in season one or volume two. I um, was working directly under Ruin, etc. So, yeah, that's who that is. Got her. Caught her in 4K. This is not how. I remember this scene at all. And also, like, something interesting is, like, y'all probably in the anime don't know who Sagi Naki is, right? And I've made countless of videos about this uh, stuff that was cut out from Volume 5. And when this is going up, Volume 6, I should post that sometime probably on this week. Uh, but yeah, Sagi Naki has challenged uh, Kiyotaka, right? There's been her uh, mention a couple times. She is the leader of Class A, and this is like the first time that we're really seeing her in Season 2, but she was involved in the sports festival, um, and I think that's the only time she was really involved, but right, they're making her presence known late in the season where they should have done it a little bit earlier. Similar to like Nagamo, how he was imp he's important, and they waited a long time to introduce him when he was introduced earlier. I don't know why they're doing this, but <laughs> he's a... now nah, come on dog. He said you mean you, you mean you <laughs> I like how she's come accustomed to like knowing how he fights. Bro she sent him up she, she got some up on her sleeve. Just like what's it call it? When she fed him food. Don't do it. Oh, look at Hiyori. I love her too. She's top five. Mm, maybe I should make my top five girls, right? Ichinose is in there. Saginaki, K, Hiyori. I don't know who number five is. I'm actually not the biggest fan of Furukta. I don't dislike her. I don't love her at the same But I don't like her at the same time, right? I just like Hiyori. I don't know. I like a lot of... You either have to have like a, a snappy attitude or like be like very like happy all the time i guess damn classroom of the harem continues <laughs> you know it's actually insane how much of a, a dog he is right he don't even know let's see there's her i'm not gonna spoil nothing there's her there's 
Uh, ooh, I almost spoiled some. There's Kagozawa, there's Sato, there's Sakura. There's many more to come. Like, what the heck? Dang, Chabashira. Walking up out of nowhere. Looking so fine. But yeah, what is going on in this reception room? Even I don't remember. Ooh, I forgot about this scene. Because his dad is crazy. But his son is crazy too. You give me the arson? I'm guessing he killed himself like as of guilt or like the dad like pushed him or like did some harsh stuff to him, make him kill himself. Like this is a very interesting thing, right? This is like some slight spoilers, but like I think in book 11 we got some insight of like on Saki and Aki and she talked about like the term geniuses, right? Because we all know Saki and Aki is a genius. She's good at what she does. Very smart, right? But like the thing about her, like his dad is like, yo, the white room this, the white room that. Like everybody born in the white room is going to be superior to those outside. And that may be true. But there's also like the outlook of like what other people can do. Like other people who are geniuses, other people that are physically gifted. Look at Saki and Naki. Look at Koenji. Koenji is a physical freak. He's also very smart, right? I'd even put him on the level of somebody from, from the white room, right? Like, it's very interesting how you look at it as of who's better, right? I may do a video about this. I don't know. Um, I know that I'm looking forward to volume zero. It's supposed, I think it got delayed actually. It was supposed to come out next month, um, when this season ended. So I'm really looking forward to reading that. Just give my thoughts about the white room. Maybe, like I said, maybe I'll make a video about this in the future. So that means nobody that came after him or before him is better. That's Sagi Naki's father. Um, kind of proves kind of, well, may, may not why she's a genius, but someone that's very important at least. Obviously he had some help. Um, that's a very important statement because, hold on, let me rewind it a little bit to exactly what it says. Dang, come on. Okay, it says, which means the only help he can offer is what falls in those rules. So, obviously, somebody that could potentially, like, his father might use underhanded methods that are outside the rules in order to get him expelled or get him to drop out, meaning that, um... <laughs> the Saginaki director Saginaki cannot help him if it's rules that the the father like broke the rules. So eventually, Kiyotaka might have to break some rules in order to survive, right? I think self-explanatory, but you try not try to use them. That's what happens when you try to make a tool out of somebody who. <laughs> yeah, mastermind like him okay I don't want to like <sighs> I don't like want to gripe or nothing but you mean to tell me y'all couldn't animate her in different pajamas like you mean to tell me she stank she wearing the same clothes she had been wearing this for like the past three episodes like come on dog mm, that word's gonna hurt her heart nah she heard you That's tough. I, I could just reimagine that scene at the end of season one, like him talking about as long as he wins. That's, boy. If you guys wanna see my other reactions, my reviews to light novels, some cut content, I will leave that in the description below. But with that away, let's get into the breakdown of season two, episode 10. I will say they did leave a decent amount out of this episode, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little bit disappointed. There's also some stuff because it's such a big book that they could just be like, putting stuff in different places, adapting it in different episodes. So I will mention that um, when I talk about it. However, they're not big spoilers or anything like that. So you guys, if you want, you can still watch it. So the first thing is Ruin Soliloquy. 
Bruin, he is someone who has no fear. When he was in middle school, he killed a snake without fearing to do so. He didn't do it because he wanted to be a hero. It's just something that I guess inspired a passion through him. He gains pleasure whenever his enemies that they meet their demise. And which is why in the high school, right, he bullies people, he uses force um, to get his way. Well, he doesn't really bully people, but he definitely uses force to get his way. But he thinks that he doesn't get any more pleasure out of what he does because, well, when you're at the top, there's not really many people who can challenge him where he believes and wishes that somebody will take him down and that the only way that would happen is a match to the death. There's the stalking stuff with Class C and the fact that the Ayan and Koji group, they're actually being stalked as well. Akito, the dude in the archery club with the purple hair, he's being stalked and he mentioned that to the group and that they were being stalked in that meeting that was actually changed in the anime version where Kiyosaki ends up leaving, where he goes to talk to the girl with the purple hair known as Kamuro and she says that Saki and Naki ordered, him, uh, ordered her to stalk him where she has something hanging over her, which is why she has to stalk her. Um, and so Kiyotaka, he's like, well, you can do whatever you want, right? You can, you just don't report it to Ruin, right? I'll let you keep stalking me in order to let Saginaki, I guess, have her way. So Kamuro, she's like, yo, I'll report it to Ruin, right? And then, you know, that's how the whole thing, it went down. She's not gonna report it because he allows her to continue stalking him and report to Saginaki. And I mentioned this like in the middle when I was reacting, a lot of the stuff involving Saki and Naki was left out. So she might be someone that's like coming out of the blue. But like I said, um, you guys probably wanna watch some of my cut content videos if you don't wanna watch like my full reactions and stuff um, because she was actually involved in the sports festival and that's when she really started coming into the limelight. But then there's also the next thing with the scene with Hiori. Um, there was actually like, uh, he went on to lunch with her, which like I said, it could be going into the next episode that they're trying to change it. Um, they went to lunch, they started talking more about books where she keeps books on her in her bag because she wants to be able to talk to books with somebody important or somebody that she um, likes because they nobody in her class is interested in books so she wants to find somebody outside of her class who's, and if, even if they do uh, they may not have the same interest so she wants to find somebody that has the same interest in you know surprisingly it's Kiyotaka so she offers him some of the books that she has and that he can read whatever books that he wants and borrows them I find that really cool right she's starting to um and he's starting to get out more meet new people and that they have similar interests I think that's pretty cool meeting with the Ayane and Yakoji group they try to figure out who X is right Hasabe she ends up teasing Kiyotaka talking about if he's going out with Yori also if he's going out with Hirika which he declines and as they do this the other members are trying to figure out who X is where Ari suggests that it's Kiyotaka because he's always around Harikta and that he's kind of quiet and you know he's a little bit cunning where they're like nah it's probably in the hand they brush it off and they keep it moving there's also the scene where uh, Chabishira she ends up um, talking out to Kiyotaka asking him to come with her it was actually changed it wasn't in the library it was in the classroom the next day where Satoshi asked Kiyotaka to hang out and he declines because he noticed that Chabishira was going to try something I think that's pretty important right showcasing him and Sato's relationship him and Chabishira's relationship right I'm kind of mad that they changed that a little bit lastly there's Nagumo he was left out of this like I said it could be in the next episode um he's talking with a girl and she uses his first name meaning that they're close they talk about how Manabu is trying to beat Harikta and trying to defeat Harikta Manabu where the girl she says yo our relationship changed um at like at some point um I don't know like really if that's really important but they did mention that um the girl she ends up dropping her amulet where Kiyotaka he notices it he picks it up and he gives it to the staff right he wasn't gonna call out to her because well he's not that type of person overall I feel like they left out some important details um in furthering relationships like with Hiyori with Sato um with Nagumo I think that's important um and they changed the like the stall stuff but it wasn't that too bad of an episode i give it probably like a six or seven out of ten and we have three episodes left so i'm really excited but let me know how you guys feel about how they adapted it or this episode in the comment section below thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'll the notification so you guys never saw a new video from me it's on twitter snapchat and tiktok is on the screen in the description below thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to unleash your potential